In this video, I'm gonna show you how I currently have my stock portfolio allocated. 70% of my portfolio is in low cost index funds, specifically the VU and VTSAX. The reason this strategy suits me is because I find it to be the most rational. I'm a long-term investor. I'm focused on achieving the best annualized returns over the next 30 years. And what I've learned is I don't have to be that smart in order to get better than average results. If I just focus on doing average, in all likelihood, I will do much better than the average investor. At least that's what the data says, and I'm a data-driven investor. Let's get to the individual stocks. If you'd like me to go in more depth on any one of these companies I'm about to mention, just let me know in the comments. The number one stock in my portfolio is Apple. I have a little bit of reason to pat myself on the back and that I've owned Apple longer than Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett have. Myself or Warren Buffett, I'm better than he is. It's a fact. The reason it's 11% of my portfolio is not because I set out for it to be 11%. It's because it's done so well. I first bought this stock back in 2014. I've only added to that position since. And even today, I have all the dividends from Apple just automatically reinvested right back in. It's an amazing business. And I'm not saying that like it's some huge revelation. But this is a company I feel very comfortable owning still for the long haul. Next up, we have Berkshire Hathaway. At the risk of oversimplifying, Berkshire has a number of insurance businesses which provide something called float. Think of it like an interest-free loan. Berkshire is able to use that money to buy whole businesses or pieces of businesses like stocks. When you consider how much cash they have on deck and their continued focus on finding value, that gives them a lot of power because they could buy something huge that only continues to improve uh, the economics of the underlying business. Next up is Costco. I've owned Costco since 2020. It's done very well for me. I plan to own it probably for as long as I invest. Something came out today actually about Amazon having this algorithm that allowed them to secretly uh, raise prices based on what they... Yeah, I'll put the link in the description. Let me not get us off topic here. Costco is a company that I'd never have to worry about them trying to do that because Costco's whole whole business really depends on them saving people money on the things that they buy. That's to me like an enduring value proposition that I'm confident no matter what happens in the world with AI and whatever else, Costco's still going to be creating a lot of value for people and of value to people, I believe, 30 years from now. Like it's a very predictable business. I've saved the worst for last year with Alibaba. This is the loser in the portfolio, at least short term. You are one pathetic loser. Uh, I first purchased this in January of 2021. <laughs> It's practically just gone down, <laughs> gone down since. Folks, we're headed into the ground. I did a video recently looking at Alibaba's latest earnings. I'm focused on the underlying business. I recognize that in due time, price will reflect the underlying earnings of the business. You know, you're not going to have everything be a big winner. Thankfully, with Apple, Costco, and Berkshire Hathaway, that's far more than outweighed the negative effect of Alibaba plus low cost indexing, which has kept me right on average with how the market is done. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.